Hey, listen, you, you're here on a special day. We, we have a, a special, a very special guest speaker this morning. Uh, Bishop Shane Calhoun is a, is a friend of mine. He's a close friend of mine. And uh, he, he's the executive pastor of Family Worship Center in Cleveland, Tennessee. And you know if you're from Cleveland, Tennessee, you got to be holy, right? You, you got to be. Got some Church of God folks here with their thumbs up. You got to be holy. Bishop Shane's story uh, is a unique story. I, I asked him a little bit about it this morning. He, uh, he was born legally deaf, and uh, he said dumb. I'll, I'll call him mute because I don't want to think of him as dumb. Or I, or I still want to leave that available to use today. But he... <laughs> he, <laughs> he uh, he was born deaf and dumb, and uh, at eight years old, hey, Bill and Betty, at eight years old, God miraculously healed him, and uh, <laughs> Jesus paid him a visit in his bedroom, well, I understand, and uh, he, he might want to tell you more about it. Bishop Shane's ministry is, is uh, one that's... It's a supernatural ministry. He has a lot of the gifts of the Spirit uh, that, that, where God works with him. Would you stand to your feet one more time and put your hands together for Bishop Shane Calhoun. We'll give the Lord a great big cheer, will you? He's worthy of praise. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, the Lord is good. And I feel him in the house. It's a wonderful privilege. You may be seated to be here with you this morning. You have a wonderful pastor and first lady. And we appreciate them so very much. And we love Pastor Caleb and Sister Ashley and their little girl. Amen. Give them a cheer. Uh, Brother Landon Few. Give Brother Landon a hand. He's one of my favorites all of a sudden. I stole a message from him. He emailed the old man a message. And I appreciate it. I'm going to preach it next Sunday. So that means I don't have to study all week. I'm just kidding. But amen. I enjoy the anointing on people's lives. Amen. There is an anointing on your life this morning. And I feel the presence of the Lord because of the anointing that is on you as an individual. When I got this message, the Lord said, it's for set free. I said, thank you, Lord. I need all the help I can get. And when the Lord began to speak to me, I went into almost like a dream or a vision. And I seen the Lord as he was raising up a body of believers. And it was this body. And so today's message is going to tell you where you are and why you've been going through what you've been going through. You're in preparation for a manifestation today. God has been preparing you for greatness and God's been preparing you for mighty things to come. Somebody tell your neighbor, say the best is yet to come. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I might dance a little bit. Is that all right? Tell your neighbor, say something good is about to happen in your life. Something good is on its way. Things are about to change. You're about to walk into a new season. Oh, lift your holy hands unto the Lord. Say, I'm ready for my season. I'm ready for my change. I'm ready for what you want to do in my life. I like what David said. David said, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, it's almost morning in my life. Joy is on the way. Now tell them I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Tell them everything's going to be all right. Help me prophesy. Everything's going to be all right. Things are about to happen. Things are about to change in your life. There's a new direction coming your way. And God's about to reveal himself and do something you thought he would never do. I'm telling you, you don't have to be qualified. You've been anointed for a time such as this. Hallelujah. 
Somebody tell your neighbor, say, I've been anointed for this season. I've been anointed for this time. It's my time. Somebody shout, it's my time. Somebody shout, it's my time. It's my time for a breakthrough. It's my time for a miracle. It's my time for healing. It's my time. I feel the man with the long white robe. Come on, clap your hands like you got the devil between them. Yeah, yeah. It's your season to be blessed. You've been waiting for this. Wait no longer. Today is your day. Oh, I feel like preaching up in this house. Well, I've been preaching camp meeting since I was nine years old, so I don't know how to have church, but just have church. Is that all right? Take your Bible, go with me over into the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 10. Now, y'all let me get me a foundation. I'm going to haul off and preach again in a moment. But I am 200 under your pound business. And it takes my breath sometimes, but in a moment, I get a second wind. But I want to give you something real quickly. I hear the Lord speaking. Your miracle is here today. Shanda Bahaya. If you've been needing a miracle, today is your day. Not because I'm here, but because Jesus is here. And if he can give me a miracle, I know for a fact he can give you a miracle. You got a miracle sitting on the front row. Your pastor got a miracle. We're still celebrating the miracle. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, you ought to celebrate the miracle of God. You ought to celebrate your salvation. You ought to celebrate your deliverance. You ought to celebrate for what the Lord has brought you from. It's worth celebrating. Man, I feel him in the place. I was praying some weeks ago. and I said, Lord, why do we not see miracles like we used to see it? How come we don't see the miracles of Jack Cole and William Branham and A.A. Allen and Amy Simple McPherson and Catherine Kuhlman? And the Lord said, my people don't know how to praise me for what I've already done. Come on. How many of you could use a breakthrough this morning? Let me give you something interesting. The Lord said, people has not praised me for what I've already done, so therefore I'm not doing anything now. How many of you got a bank account? The rest of you must have it mason jars. I am in South Carolina. But when you put money in the bank, when you use that ATM card, you know you can get something out of it. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, when you put something into it, you can get something out of it. And what I'm trying to tell you is if you'll praise him for what you want him to do or praise him for what you need him to do, you'll activate him and heaven will do it quicker than you expect it. So here's what I like to say. If I'm asking God to do something, I ask and then I celebrate him doing it. Hallelujah. Even though I don't see it, I'm expecting it to manifest. There's some folk need to get ready for your manifestation this morning because you have been through some things and God's about to change it because you're going to celebrate him and you're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Somebody raise your hand and say, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for my miracle. I'm getting ready for my deliverance. I'm getting ready for my breakthrough. Something is happening in the atmosphere of set free church. This is not an ordinary day. I got up this morning to receive what the Lord wants me to have. I feel him in the place. Tell your neighbor, say, you're going to get something you ain't never had. You're about to do something you ain't never done. And you're about to go somewhere you ain't never gone. Because this day's been ordained for you. Hallelujah. Well, yeah, glory to God. Take this Bible. Let's read it. I'm having a good time. Somebody said he must have got lost. No, I'm just having a good time getting there. 
I like sometimes Pastor Caleb to take the long way around because I'm going to have church one way or another. So let's look here in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 10. We understand this story that David is getting ready for kingship. He's getting ready for lordship. But he doesn't know it. He's just a shepherd boy. He's a nobody. But he's in preparation for greatness. He's in preparation as a little boy to become the greatest king of all of Israel. And when I began to have this dream, Pastor Caleb, Pastor Bowen, listen. I was standing on the stage at Set Free and the Lord said, My people are in preparation for greatness. My people at Set Free are getting ready for greater things. See, the enemy thought that he would kill this church when he attacked your pastor. But he only fueled your pastor for greatness. He only fueled your pastor for signs, wonders, and miracles. Somebody help me preach in this house. He only... God prepared this church to walk by faith and not by sight because there's some people coming through the building that's just like David. You've been going through a season of preparation, but now it's time for the manifestation of signs and wonders and miracles and deliverance and salvation and Holy Ghost fire. Yeah, 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 Something is shifting here. No wonder you was under an attack because there's a second wind coming to set free. No wonder you went through the valley of the shadow of death because the shepherd is in this house. I'm talking to a church that's getting ready to do great exploits in the kingdom of God and not one weapon formed against this church is going to prosper because greater is he that is in you than he that's in this Wow! Yeah. Help me preach. David, David was a lot like you and me. Nobody ever thought that he would amount to anything. Nobody ever thought that he would be a threat. Nobody ever thought that he would be a warrior. Nobody ever thought that he'd be a king. Nobody ever thought that he would do anything but be just a dirty little shepherd boy. And he was content in being his father's shepherd boy. Here's the first thing I want you to get in your sanctified soul this morning. Be content in the place that you're in right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Be content in this trial. Be content in this tribulation. Be content in this sickness. Be content in this disease. Be content in this anxiety. Be content in this depression. Why? Because out of that is where the manifestation comes. You're only in the season. Seasons change. Come on. Time changes. And your change is coming. But there's one thing I've learned about contentment. If we're faithful in the small things. If we're faithful in the little things that God has put us in. Hallelujah. Then he can reward us to be rulers over great and mighty things. Anybody with me? Have I got any candidates for rulership? 
Have I got any candidates for miracles? Let me see your hand. Have I got any candidates for breakthroughs? Anybody here you about to have a nervous breakdown? You seem like you can't take no more. Anybody here dealing with anxiety? Anybody got a bad report from the doctor? Anybody got bad news from the banker? I'm going to tell you something that's going to change your life. Be faithful right now in this season because if you're faithful in this season, God's going to send you into a season where you're going to be blessed where you're going to possess and where you're going to rule and where you're going to have power and dominion over all things. Oh. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm getting ready to transform. I'm getting ready to be renewed. I'm getting ready to be restored. I'm getting ready to be refurbished. I'm getting ready to be rebooted. Anybody know what reboot means? It means when you wipe the slate clean and you start all over from scratch. Some of you thought you'd never get a second chance. Today is the day of second chances. Hallelujah. And David was preparing for something great. He wasn't qualified. He hadn't been in the church of faith. He hadn't been to seminary. He hadn't been to edict school. He was dirty. He smelled like sheep. He'd wallowed in the pit. Some of you sitting here looking at me, you have dealt with loneliness. David knew about loneliness. He was the youngest of his brothers, but he dealt with loneliness. He knew what seclusion was. He knew what being the the little nobody in the family was. The one that nobody looked to, no one depended on. He was back there hid somewhere in the wilderness just tending sheep. But he was happy there. God was preparing him there. I'm sure that fear come over him every now and then because when the bear come out of the woods... He had to learn how to combat a bear hand by hand. Come on. And then fear come over when the lion came. But the Bible said that he slew the lion and the bear with his bare hands. I believe the reason he was able to do that because deep inside he was being preparation to be a champion against Goliath in the days to come. I'm looking this morning at some giant slayers. I'm not looking at ghostbusters, but I'm looking at giant slayers. People that has their sword, they're just waiting to charge. I'm looking at some folk that's got their shield. They just ready to push back the enemy. Come on and help me preach. I'm looking at some people that nobody ever thought God would use them, but they're about to be promoted. They're about to be saluted. They're about to stand on the front lines of the armies of the Lord, and they're about to take back what the devil took from them. Woo! Somebody tell your neighbor, say, I feel like David. I've been looked over. I've been picked on. I've had to do the bad jobs, the dirty jobs. Nobody ever believed in me. Nobody ever had confidence in me. But my time has come. Anybody believe it? Raise your hands up and say, it's time. Tell your neighbor, say, it's time for you. I'm telling you. Weeping has lasted for the night. But I look from this side to this side and I hear the sound of joy. I hear the sound of peace. I hear the sound of miracles. I hear the Holy Ghost as he's walking in and out the aisles and in the pews. And he said, I have come to deliver you. I have come to make you free. Because who the Son has set free is free indeed. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm going to walk out this valley with my hands praising the Lord. I'm coming out of this sickness. I'm coming up out of this disease. I'm coming up out of this depression. I'm coming up out of this anxiety. Anxiety. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. And when I do, I'm going to slay my giant. Give your neighbor a high five and say, I knew you were something. Tell him, say, I knew you was a secret warrior. 
I knew you was a secret agent. You're getting ready. Wait, don't shout like that, sister. You'll turn me on. Is that all right? She's about to make me huck a buck and ain't even got started. Chapter number 16, verse 10. Let me give you some word because if I don't, somebody's going to go out here and say, well, he didn't even open the Bible. He didn't even read a text. I got what you need. Hold on, I'll throw you the chicken bone. Hallelujah. I've had people mad at me over that. Have you? We're evangelists. Sometimes we get turned on. Come on. I got a word. And the Bible says, Woo. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Tell your neighbor, say, you're about to pass before the Lord this morning. I see that. He said, the brothers have passed before Samuel. They were rejected. Somebody tell you, tell your neighbor, say, I'm not going to be rejected any longer. Because today I'm going to walk before the Lord. And something's going to happen. Let's look at it. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. I'm going to stop right there and say this. I decree and declare the Lord has chosen set free church. I understand in this community alone there's churches that profess Jesus but don't know Jesus. They're doing everything but the Jesus thing. Somebody tell your neighbor, say it's all about Jesus. It's not about what we feel, what we think church ought to be. It's what Jesus said the church should be. Let's read on. I was said, and Samuel said to Jesse, are these all the children? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. Somebody raise your hand up and say, I'm still here. I'm still present. I'm still in the house. Don't forget me. I'm waiting my turn. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm waiting my turn. Tell them, I'm the next in line. Today's the day I get promoted. Oh, come on, let me finish reading. There's yet the youngest, and behold, he's tending the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. Somebody tell your neighbor, help me. I like people to help me preach. Is that all right? Well, when you was in school, they told you to say your ABCs. After the teacher said ABC, you said ABC. Is that right? So you learned your ABCs. I'm about to teach you how to get promoted this morning. Somebody say the Lord is not going to sit down until I stand up. Oh, that's a word. That's a word. That's a word. That's a word. I'm not sitting down, Pastor Caleb, until the Lord stands up. Because he's got something for me. And when I stand toe to toe with him, he's going to roll back the heavens and he's going to pour out an anointing and he's going to pour out his favor and he's going to pour out his blessing. He's going to pour out his tender mercies. He's going to pour out an anointing that will change Powersville, Greenville, and every other deal. Because it's my time. It's my turn. It's time for me to get ready. Yay. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready with a beautiful eyes and had a handsome appearance. Somebody say, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. It'll make you plumb pretty. And if you're a man, tell him it'll make you handsome. But he was handsome to look to. And the Lord said, somebody say, and the Lord said. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him, for this is him. Some of you men ought to jump up and say, I am him. Some of you women ought to say, I am her. 
come on I am him I am her I am the one that the Lord has been calling I've been hid in the backside of the desert I've been hid in the wilderness I've been hid in the valley but I'm coming out because I'm him I'm her I'm the one that the Lord has chosen I'm not sitting down until the anointing reaches me and manifest upon me I'm not giving up I'm not quitting I'm not setting up I'm not gonna stop I'm gonna keep pressing on until I get what I deserve I'm gonna keep pressing on until the Lord does what the Lord said he would do for me so they was preparing to anoint him y'all been in preparation for an impartation. Y'all been in preparation to do great things that you thought you could not do. You're right, you can't, but he can. And when the anointing possesses you, something has to change around you. Some of you got some lost grandchildren and some lost children. But after the day, there's an anointing going to go home with you. And it's going to bind up the spirit of addiction. It's going to bind up the spirit of pornography. It's going to bind up the spirit of sin. And the Bible said the spirit of the Lord will rise upon them. And they shall see the glory of the Lord. And every foul thing shall be cast down. Every sin shall be broken. Every curse shall be crushed. I've come to tell you, Jesus is getting ready to promote you into a place that revival comes to your house. Revival is coming. Woo. Brother, for years, for about 10 years, can I be real with you now? I like it when you shell. I like the organ, but let's be real. When you see preachers, sometimes you think they don't go through nothing. They seem like they got the world by the tail. Honey, the world has us by the tail most of the time. We're just fighting for our lives. Just trying to survive, ain't we, son? If anything, there's a target on your back and on my back. Because we're a threat to the enemy. He knows that when we come down to his camp, everybody in the camp's going home. He knows that when we go to the crack house, everybody's coming off a crack. He knows that when we go down to the mental institution, everybody depressed wanting to commit suicide all of a sudden wants to live because of the anointing. We got to just be, somebody say, content where we are for the moment. But the word doesn't change. Pastor Steve, I have suffered for 10 years with sugar diabetes. And I find myself getting to where I can't do the things that I used to do. When I was here the last time, I couldn't go up and down these steps. But son, I can do it all now. <laughs> Healing's coming. Manifestation's coming. And, and, and I've weeped and I've cried and I've begged God to heal me, but he's not healed me yet. I'm going through a process to get to my miracle. I take four shots a day. I hate it with a passion. But that doesn't mean that God's not going to heal me. Because I expect the last shot to be the last shot. You understand what I'm saying? I took one this morning, but I'm not expecting to take one this afternoon. My mind has not changed about God and what he can do. Here's the problem with church folk. Our mind changes as our mood, mood changes. <laughs> you can't ever get to greatness when your mood changes like that up today believe in God down in the valley I don't believe God here's the worst thing that can happen is getting mad at God you got to be absolutely crazy brother Mark Ward to get mad at God because that is your only hope and if you get mad at your only hope then you become what hopeless David was content being where he was. He was content until his time come. He never thought for a million years that he would become the king of Israel. Never thought in a million years. He probably always thought with the mindset that most of us get, I'll just be a nobody the rest of my life. We ever, do we deal with that? Anybody here have that problem? 
Well, I'll probably be sick for the rest of my life. I'll just have to deal with it. Or you're saying, well, I know what the doctor said. I guess I'm going to die. Well, you could have believed that. But you didn't want to die. You had a pressing spirit and a made-up mind that God was going to heal you. And that's exactly why he healed you. People come together in one mind and one accord. Listen, you cannot ever believe the report of this world. You've got to believe the report of the Lord. You've got to be content in the state that you're in because I'm telling you, as I'm standing here on this carpet, he's about to change your condition. He's about to turn you around. He's about to fix you. He's about to bring you out. He's about to deliver you. But you just got to remain faithful and content in the state that you're in because it will change in the morning I still believe God if he can open up deaf ears if he can loose my tongue he can loose me from insulin somebody shout yes Tell your neighbor, say, he don't love that preacher no more than he loves you. Your miracle's around the corner. He don't love, hey, he don't love Bishop uh, Bowen no more than he loves you. He loves us unconditional. He loves us equally. Here's the difference. We just stay faithful where we are. We just stay committed where we are. We just hang on until Jesus passes by. And when Jesus passes by, things change according to his word. He's bound by his promise. So the Bible says that Jesse starts preparing to anoint David. Help me, Jesus. When I look from this side to that side, I see a mass of people that's been in preparation for this moment. Let me finish the dream. While I was in the dream, people were coming through like an old-fashioned prayer line. Pastor Steve wasn't pouring oil over them. I wasn't pouring oil over them. Pastor Caleb wasn't pouring oil over them. Pastor Landon wasn't pouring oil over them. But right here, there was something falling out of heaven like a golden waterfall. And people were walking under that golden oil and when they come out over here their cancer was dropping their deaf ears were opened my God the blindness and the cataracts were falling off Somebody said, I don't believe all that. Well, that's why you're in the shape you're in. You'll never see a manifestation if you don't believe the God of the Bible. Come on and help me preach. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. I didn't come to motivate you. I come to encourage you and tell you, you don't have to stay in that condition. You don't have to live that life. You don't have to continue to be bound and tormented. You don't have to continue to fight depression and fight anxiety and fight addiction and fight alcoholism you can get under the spout where the glory is running out and your life can be changed forever for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever and he's a God that changes not And the writer said he's not a God that he should lie. And hey, come on and help me. And the Bible said his hand is not too short that he can't reach down to where you are. The Bible said his ear is not too heavy that he can't hear the cry of the righteous. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still righteous in his sight. And he hears me when I call. Let me finish. 13th verse said, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Somebody say, in the midst of my doubters and my skeptics. Y'all got some. I hear somebody shouting. I got a few too, believe it or not. Everybody don't like me. And I'm good with it. Because they're like their elder brother, the devil. He don't like me neither. Preach. I hate to break it, Pastor Steve, but everybody don't like you. 
That means you're on the Lord's side. He said, if they ain't for you, they're against you. But he said, if I be for you, who can be against you? Everybody don't like you, Caleb Howard. You're a threat to them. They say you're the boss around here. They call me the Sarge at my church. Sarge. I am a pusher. Never push no dope, but I push Jesus on everybody. I push perfection. I push everybody to be the best that they can be because it's like being in the army. We're only looking for a few good men and a few good women. Look here, let's read on. And the Bible said, Samuel anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose and went to Ramah. Why did he get up and leave? Because he knew he had the right person in charge. He didn't have to worry about how things would be handled. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord was upon David. And David would be powered and controlled by the Spirit and would know how to lead like the Spirit. He wasn't threatened. He wasn't intimidated. He knew that David could handle the task because he had been prepared for it. And again, I look across this crowd and I see people who's been in preparation. And now it's time for the manifestation of God's gifts and promises to unfold and be seen and revealed in your life. In conclusion of my dream, I've seen people stand up that their hands were like fire. They touched people with cancer and the cancer dissolved and they touched people with gorders and the gorders dissolved. Just like it used to be. I've been around the world. I've seen people get out of wheelchairs, get off of gurneys. I've seen them come in ambulances and leave on their own recognizance. I've seen, like this past week, I had three individuals come into the tabernacle while we was in revival. And it's been years. It's been a long time since I've cast out any devils, but they begin to manifest. Well, let me say something. If the devil's going to manifest, I'm going to manifest. Help me, somebody. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, it's time for you to manifest in the anointing and drive out the devil, drive out demon spirits, and drive out sin and drive out addiction. You listen to me. People don't have confidence in anything dead. The only thing that has confidence in dead things, that's buzzards. They know it's their next meal. Huh? People have confidence in people who has changed and people who walk in power and authority and dominion. And there's an army rising up in this tabernacle today that is going to march like a mighty army with power and authority and dominion because it's your season, it's your time. You're about to walk under the glory of God. You're about to walk under the hand of the Almighty. Things are changing for you. Things are turning around. What you've been dealing with in the last few days, you will not deal with it after today. All that depression, you won't have it. You're going to have a mind of Christ. Help me preach in this place. That he got by Shia, that sin that's been hid in your heart is about to come out because the Holy Ghost is going to search your heart and he's going to give you the heart of Christ. He's going to come in and he's going to wash away everything that is not like him. Help me preach. And he's going to save. He's going to sanctify. He's going to deliver. And he's going to fill with the Holy Ghost again with the spirit of the evidence of tongues. Come on. I'm not ashamed of speaking in tongues. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I've come too far under the influence of God's power to be ashamed of it now. I didn't make it 50 years on my own. I made it 50 years because the anointing broke every yoke. The anointing broke every chain. The anointing broke every shackle. I've never been alone. He's been with me all the way. Oh. I sense a miracle anointing over this house. We're getting ready to pray for some folk. I'm through. I'm through when he's through. Brother, I love that organ. Feel like I'm at one of the big count meetings. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, so you're getting ready to do the impossible. You're being prepared for big things. You're being prepared for a manifestation of 
the gifts of God. You're being prepared for great victory. You're being prepared to take down the Goliaths in your life. You're getting prepared to bind up the brokenhearted and set to liberty them that are bound. You're being prepared for kingship. The Bible said that we're a chosen people, that we're a royal priesthood, that we're a holy generation. You're being prepared for lordship. You're kings and priests, the Bible said on the earth. Tell your neighbor, say, I told you I was somebody. You just didn't believe it. I am somebody. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the first and not the last. I'm my daddy's boy. I'm a king's kid. I sit at the table of God and I eat the manna from the Lord. I taste the honey that comes from on high. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to feast at the table of God. And I'm going to feast in the presence of my enemies. Because David said, thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've come by to tell somebody, you're about to start living. You're coming out of this thing. You're about to break forth. You're going to be like the rose of Sharon. You're going to bloom again. You're going to be like the river that comes out of the desert. You're going to flow again. Come on, somebody, raise your hands and say, I'm going where nobody's ever gone. I'm going to do what nobody's ever done. I'm going to walk in anointing like nobody's ever had. I'm going to see the hand of God like nobody's ever seen it. I've been disqualified by this world, but I've just got qualified this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to do great things for the kingdom of God because I I got Jesus on the inside. He's working on the outside. And there's a change coming my way. Yeah. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. I dare somebody to jump up on your feet. Start clapping your hands. Start celebrating. Start shouting, start leaping for joy. I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Celebrate your miracle, celebrate your breakthrough, celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Under the whole side. Come on, all the musicians, help me for a moment. We're gonna have a praise break. Why? Because people are breaking out. People are getting out of prison. People are breaking out of addiction. People's breaking out of sickness. People's breaking out of disease. People's coming out. Tell your neighbors, I'm about to celebrate your victory. You've weeped long enough. Do like this, just wipe the tears away. Put a smile on your face. And say, I'm not a hostage to depression, to anxiety. Pastor Steve, I've never seen a time where so many people in the church were battling depression. You don't have to battle it. It's already been beat. The blood is against your depression. The blood of Jesus is against your anxiety. I've never seen a time that so many people had, did not have self-confidence. Tell your neighbor, say, get confidence in yourself because the Lord had confidence in you. How can I prove it? He let you live to get up this morning. He knew you would handle the day like you're supposed to handle it. Come on, I'm still here because he got confidence in me. Hallelujah. How many of y'all ready for a miracle? <laughs>